Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I'll share with you how I made this mini art journal. This is part of a bigger project which I'll share on future videos. So if you're new to my YouTube channel and you would like to see how I made this as well, make sure to subscribe and click the ring bell button so you'll be notified when new videos come up. Today's journal lies inside this structure which I created to store treasures that I found in nature. It's full of details and surprises. If you like nature, like I do, you're gonna love it. I decided to place the mini art journal inside so I could create forest theme layouts. Next week, I'll show you how I made the squirrel one, which you can see here. But today I will focus on creating the art journal from scratch, we'll bind it, decorate the backgrounds and build up the cover with different layers and details. From all the stamps I designed for my previous release with Paper RC, I'll just use the mushrooms one. ESC26. Okay, let's get started. The base that I'll use for my art journal is going to be Smoothie Paper by Paper Artsy. I'm cutting it to four and a quarter, I believe, to two stripes, which I'm going to fold later on. And I'll use just eight stripes, so it will have this many pages. And I'm going to fold it using my score ball at four and a quarter but I'm moving it a little bit because it's slightly smaller than eight and a half. It's just an A4 size. So I'm just uh, folding those pieces and then I'll bind them together. And I'm using this paper because I know that it works very well with infusions, which is what I'm going to use to create my backgrounds. So now that I have everything in place, I'm just putting all the pages together and finding where the center is. And then I'm going to use a needle to poke three holes. So I'm going to just put some thread there and then I'm going to poke a hole in the middle and two on each side and I'm doing that on a piece of foam so I don't well scratch my table or anything. So now I'm putting the thread from behind and I'm stopping it um, just before it reaches the end basically and I'm well threading the different holes in and out in and out as I pass through the different holes of the journal and then once I reach back to the center I'm going to tie some knots there. I'm a bit mm, well neurotic <laughs> and then I tie many many knots because I don't want this to unbind but you will see that the problem will not be unbinding it will be that I will be destroying it with so many mixed media techniques there and so much water but that's fine. Well now to make my pages even I'm just using the uh, guillotine there to cut all those pages so they are straight and then I'll use my scissors to finish it up. So now it's ready, I'm going to start decorating the inside covers. So I'm using infusions. If you're new to my channel, um, well, I'll explain what these are. If you're not new, you, you know by far now what these are. So basically these are some pigment powders. They have some walnut inside. They react with water. So I'm going to be using it with some water-based mediums here. So now I'm just um, applying some on the paper and spritzing with water and now I'll use it more in a more common way. Well, I like to use it like with uh, do a wash out on top of my paper and spreading it out to create basically a uniform background. And then I'll add some splashes of water and more dark uh, concentration of infusions to create a more interesting background. So. Now while it's a bit wet, if you spread some water, you can get some reaction there and get it some white splashes. And then because I want also dark splashes, I'm mixing more infusions with more water and I'm using the splatter brush to add some drops. And then once it's dry, this part is done, so we have two now. And I'm going for the third layer. On this one, I'm going to use acrylic paint. I use nougat, which is a very, like a white, um, um, how is it? White off? No, <laughs> like it's not completely white, okay? So, and then I'm mixing it with some infusions and spritzing some water. And I'm using there like a pastel technique basically. Uh, I'll put a link on a video if I find one that is similar, so then you can get uh, what I'm talking about. And I'm adding more infusions, more water, and then um, I'm drying everything. And I like the fact of working with um, with the ink, I mean with the 
what is it with the paint with infusions it made a very nice reaction so i wanted to explore this a little bit more you'll see me uh, doing something weird later that it's new to me and that i like very much here i'm just mixing two colors so i'm using um olive i mean golden sands which is my base and then i'm also using some uh what is it the orange one that i love oh here i love very much how it reacted with the acrylic paint and so i decided to the next technique uh, use it in a bit in a bit more smart way let's say so you will see that here there are very big blotches of paint but then um i like the effect that it take it took so i decided to kind of explore and experiment a little bit more on the other side well here i'm deciding to just go for it and then basically grabbing everything that is on my table to add a little bit of grunginess and detail on my pages and i actually liked very much the final outcome so vibrant and so much detail over there and then on the next one i decided to try that technique um, of mixing just um, some infusions and then splattering some some of that paint but you will see that I kind of mess it up a little bit, so I'll try this twice. <laughs> this is like exploring uh, art journal for me, so I just wanted to give it a try and give some, uh, well, try a little bit. So I mix there with a little bit of paint and then you will see that the page on the la left doesn't react that much because I already put some, uh, by mistake, some paint, but the page on the right is doing amazing things, so I'm trying to replicate this. So basically, I'm watering my brush very much mixing it with a lot of infusions and then doing like a very big washout okay so i'm letting it that ready there and then i'll prepare some of that paint spritz with water and then i'll have my splatter brush ready so i put that on water on top of my pages and while it's wet then i'm going to splatter with the paint and now i'm slowing this down so you can see in real time and can you see all those plots oh my gosh I love that. So I'm just heat setting that and then while it's still a little bit wet, I'm repeating the step and it still reacts. And I just love that I discovered this by chance basically. And it's kind of doing like some sort of sales or something like, you know, the uh, pouring paint that they do some sort of sale. So it reminds me a little bit of that. Uh, I know that it's not like that, but I don't know if it, remind me, uh, it reminded me like that. So I decided to, to try again, I think. I know, that's it. <laughs> so now I'm just showing you the different pages and my video cut, so I couldn't have a chance of showing you the last technique, but I'll post a video on how it's done. It's this one, which is kind of like a linen effect or um, wood panel effect kind of. So I'll put a link and you can check how I made something similar in a different project. And I'm going to add some ink. I'm going to age the pages and fill in those blanks. This cover, I didn't do the front. It's just by chance and by working on all the inside that I got all those nice splotches. So actually we can say that the cover for the art journal, which is that, uh, kind of made it itself. So it was a little bit accidental and I like it very much for that. So, And now I'm just adding the ink everywhere because I like to add this vintage touch and to complete kind of my pages and I think that it makes them more more finished but of course this is just the background and the inside I will work that on different videos and with different themes and different stamps but for now it will do and it will be the base for my art journal and I use so much water that I need I need to rebind it eventually <laughs> because it's break, breaking to pieces but it's nice and then it's adds just some more charm and vintage to it so this is how it looks and then we're going to work on the cover which is by itself <laughs> and then i'll work independently on it so i'm just going to use this first stamp which is from esc 26 i think and then i'm going to just stamp there uh, the the title basically but i'm going to stamp also in another piece of paper again this is a smoothie and I'm going to create the title. This is going to say Forest Treasures. Okay, so from there, I'll use just the label. And from the one at the bottom, I'll just use the mushrooms. Then I'm going to watercolor all the images with infusions. Again, golden sands. 
and once that's done I'm going to dry it and cut it apart and once everything is cut I'm going to age a little bit more with this dress ink with the vintage photo all the edges because I don't like to see whites and the same thing with the mushrooms I like to build up layers like this um, to add some 3d elements so besides of actually adding some ink I'm going to kind of shape those mushrooms into kind of 3d a little bit so they stand out a little bit more and also I'm going to mount the title the forest treasures with some foam adhesive so then it stands out a little bit more so I'm just attaching it to the back and then I'll put it there and then I'll start working on adding the first layers to my cover so for the cover I'm going to use natural elements that I found well either in the street or in different plants that I have there because they are trying so I'm just adding some tweaks to the actual tweaks of the stamp because the stamp has some tweaks and I'm going to use multimedia mat that's my go-to glue when I want to actually stick something that it's really thick and 3d <laughs> so you need to be very generous and you need to put it everywhere basically and if you put more then you just let your uh, things um, stand on top of your surface and once the glue dries it will kind of bring them together so it's better that you hold your <laughs> um, I don't know instinct of pushing things uh, to glue because basically then you really need to push until they are fully glued you know but if you just put them there and lay them uh, with the glue touching both the paper and the piece that you want to attach then the glue will do will do everything for you you don't need to apply any pressure but here well I was kind of I don't know if being a little bit of stingy or or if I wanted to be a little bit more careful and then I didn't apply so many glue there because I didn't want to to see to well finally see a lot of it uh, through because even if it dries clear um, you can see a little bit of a blotch uh, sometimes so it's better not to add a lot if your 3d elements are not completely flat basically but um, because I'm going to attach the paper on top then basically the paper will hold all the uh, different tweaks together so I'm going to apply the paper and then I'm going to apply some pressure on top by putting a little bit of um, well like um, what is it well some flasks <laughs> and some pressure on top and then once it's dry now it's dry I'm going to apply the different layers so after a few hours maybe I decided to go ahead and carry on it was less than two hours I'm sure so now I'm adding the base of what it's going to be the forest basically and I'm adding some seeds these are actually flowers from an elder flower tree so I'm adding them there I found them at my friend's place <laughs> She has an elder flower tree and then when I saw all those over there, I asked her, can I have a bag to carry some home? And she said, oh sure, you want to carry some flowers? Yeah, of course, help yourself. And I was like over the moon when she said yes. So I just got them uh, to do something like this. And now here you can see the initial arrangement of the different flowers that I've made and the different leaves. These are some ferns, very, very tiny ferns. I just had few pieces, they were not in the best condition ever, but because I didn't have more and I don't like to cut plants, basically, I just, uh, if I found them cut, then I take them home. I don't like to cut them, to press them. Um, but for instance, the one on the top, which is a fern that I had, I cut it by mistake. <laughs> so actually, it's so fresh and so great because it's been pressed uh, into books since the moment that I that I actually cut it by mistake and this fern actually inspired the fern in one of the stamps on the release the one with the squirrel that you will see um, in future videos too so I'm just attaching every everything with the glue this is super easy now that everything is uh, I mean the fern is super super flat so it's super easy to to stick it's not like the twigs that were very very 3d so now I'm just arranging there the composition and that it's going to be like the second layer of, of details and of natural things and at some point I kind of thought that this would be the final layer but um, I had an idea of actually you will see incorporating some roots to this and I thought I should give it a try and 
I thought that it would ground everything and I think I think you'll like it <laughs> so uh, that's what I'll do next after I finishing attaching everything with that glue so it's super easy to do and here you just need to be very careful because it dries very quickly so if you don't want something delicate and as thin as those uh, leaves to to stick where it, it kind of landed then you need to be quick and change it the ferns it's it's fine you have more room to to move them around but the little leaves are more complicated to, to change so now that I have that then I decide to add some roots and for that I'm using a stamp set uh, that I designed a long while ago from ESC 06 this is a branch a tree branch but of course a tree branch can be used also for um, roots so I'm just covering partially my design because I don't want to ruin it basically with ink so I'm adding some roots over there and because it's everything is not seamless basically and you will see that there are some gaps I will cover those gaps with more seeds so I'll add a little bit more of ground over there and this time I'm going to use birch seeds I also used those seeds in another art journal that I made for autumn I'll put the video link uh, right now if you want to check it out it's a very much fun <laughs> and very nice art journal too so if you want to check it too feel free to go it's very old but uh, people still love to see it so now I'm adding another layer on top of those beard trees and I'm going back again with the seeds from the elder flower tree I think I'm saying elder flower tree but actually the tree is something else right <laughs> well you'll correct me in the comments if you want and, and let me know what is the actual name of the tree because of the flower I guess it's from the flower right not the tree well anyway it smells very nice by the way while I was creating this so that's pretty much everything and then I added also some details that you will see on the third picture so this is how the cover evolved and then I added just two dots of um, little um, embossing powder so it's like two brats basically and this is part of the whole project and next week I'm going to create this layout so if you want to see it make sure to come back and subscribe to my youtube channel so you don't miss anything and I'll also share how to, I created all of this in other future videos. There's no room for everything in one video, so <laughs> I really need to split it. It was a long and massive project, but I had so much fun creating it. So thanks very much for watching and for uh, seeing this video. I hope you like it. Please subscribe and let me know in the comments if you like it too. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.